Hi, uh, I've made this film so that you could make 42 masks. And so this is a production, uh, like a home production for 42 of these masks. And so um, the first thing you need to do is to gather your supplies. Um, so I'm gonna go through the supplies first. So I got three different, this is my second round, so I'll be making another 42. Um, so I went to Walmart actually and got two yards each of 100% cotton fabric. So you need fabric. Okay, the next thing, I'm gonna just go down the list here. You're gonna need a ruler, okay? So you need a ruler. You're going to need something to make templates. So you're going to have to get, I used a legal size um, file folder, but you could use, you know, tape a cereal box together. There's different things you could use. Um, I want to make sure this film's working. Oh, yeah, it is. So you, yeah, you could use a cereal box and tape it together. You just have to make these, these two templates and then a couple of small ones, okay? So you've got to go get some um, substantial cardboard to make your templates. Um, you're going to need thread. You're going to need a sewing machine. Um, you're going to need pins. I ended up thinking that these were really great. These ones, they have the balls on the end. And I have these two. Um, so either one, but uh, if you can't get the ones with the balls, that's great. You're gonna need a safety pin. Um, scissors. An iron. Uh, an ironing cloth. So you need something that's kind of soft to iron on, which is this. You're going to need elastic. Okay, so you're gonna have to get some elastic. Um, vacuum cleaner bags. I got the upright. It says upright here, vacuum cleaner bags, because they're bigger. So make sure, and I also got the premium allergen filtration. So they have a mic, and you're gonna take those apart, and I'll show you how to do that. So you're gonna need some vacuum cleaner bags. And um, so that's it. So here's the list. If you want to screenshot it or something, that's your grocery list. And of course, you'll have to put a mask on and go probably, I, I try to go to the store, you know, when I don't think there are a lot of people there. So, okay, there's your list. And this is what the template looks like when you put it on the fabric. So you might want to take a screenshot of that. Okay, so you're going to lay those out, put your template, outline it, move it. And so that's what that looks like. So I'm getting ready. Um, so when I went to the post office to deliver, I delivered 30 of these to New York and then 10 to my neighbors, um, sort of around there. And um, when I was at the post office, the woman there, she didn't have a mask on. And I said, would you guys like masks? And she goes, we would love them. And so I was like, okay, I'll get to work on it. And so that's my next job is to, you know, make masks for the post office in my town. And uh, she said she needed 15. So I'm like, okay, for all the, the carriers, the mail carriers and everyone. So um, that's what I'm up to now. I'm gonna go make some more masks. Um, I think it's a good idea to get children involved in this project here. I believe that children could do most of the work and they could actually give them away. They could start a business, uh, whatever it takes to get masks in the hands of our fellow man. That's the way I look at it. So just for the fun of it, I thought I would try one that I, I, I thought, I, gonna just 
I got some, I had these crayons here that were for fabric crayons. So I just thought I'd show you. I'm gonna try one, see how it works. Um, I drew a heart with an orange and a red together, two different colors. And yeah, I used these two crayons right here. And then I'm going to put, you put paper on top of it and the heat of the iron will secure the design to the fabric. So I, I don't know, I just thought having a heart on there because it was like, I really care about the person. Not only do I care to keep myself protected, but I'm really trying to protect, in just in, the, in case I had the virus, I wouldn't want someone else to get it. So that's why I thought, um, a heart might be a nice image on there. I don't know if it's going to work. I'll um, definitely post it once I finish it and we'll see how that works. So I've just been busy just ironing this and then I just pull my paper off and then part of the design is right there. But this should be affixed now to this fabric. Um, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I might want to give it another coat and then do it again just to make it a, a little deeper red. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the film and it lays it out how to do, you know, 40, what did I say, 42 of them at a time. And just, it, it helps to do them in like, I'm going to cut them all out and then I'm going to iron all of those pieces and then so it works out better to do it that way and it really only took um, two and a half days for me to make 42 masks. All right well best of luck and I hope you join me in this uh, effort to get masks out there to the masses. Masks for the masses. So here I am on my kitchen table and to make a whole bunch of masks what you're going to do is you're going to make two templates. One is seven and a half inches by 15, which is this one right here. And then the other one is that one. It's kind of on a heavy card stock. Um, I actually used a file folder. And this one is three inches by seven and a half inches. So the first thing, I'm going into production right now because I want to make a bunch of masks. So I have my fabric that I just bought at the store. I actually got it at Walmart and I, it's 100% cotton and it's doubled over, comes out just like that. And you can see I have them outlined. So now I've put all the, the pink, I've laid out, I've traced all the pink. So you can, I don't know if you can see those lines, but I just did them with a, with a pencil and so now I know where to cut. So on this dark fabric I'm using just a regular ballpoint pen and if, if you have to move the like if you're running out of room down at the bottom just move it up a little and just get as many of these patterns as you can get out of your fabric doubled over but remember you're doing two masks so that means you need two of these I was listening to the news and one of the newscasters suggested that you know people make face masks as something they could do so then I started you know, Googling how to make a face mask and went to a bunch of YouTube sites. And then I finally, you know, kind of chose this one. And so this is the face mask right here. And you just put it on your ears. It has a little wire that you can put in there so that it's really close to your nose. And it also has a pocket. Okay, so there's a pocket in the back. And what you can do is you can put in a piece of, this came from a vacuum cleaner bag, 
because on one of the YouTubes they said that that they have found that this has been a really um, good uh, filter. So I went and got the vacuum cleaner bags. So I am a visual learner, okay? I see something and then I'm like, oh, I wanna make that. Or, you know, you just, you see a painting and you go, oh my gosh, I wanna be able to do that. You know, so I'm a visual learner. And so one thing I've learned visually on the news is that people in other countries are all wearing masks, like in China and Japan, and they're all wearing masks. And I'm like, I actually made a mask myself. Oh, I don't know how, where it is here. So I, I've been wearing masks when I go out, because, so I just made them before I even went on, on YouTube. And one thing I noticed when I wore a mask is that people would stay away from me. <laughs> So I thought, well, that's interesting, but I'm like, why am I in a store and everyone's worried about the virus and nobody's wearing a mask? Um, so being the visual learner that I am, I started and then I thought, well, okay, I've got a, I, my um, daughter-in-law is a nurse and um, so she's right on the front line. And so I thought, well, and she lives in New York and so I'm just going to send her as many as I can make and she'll know where to put them or who to give them to um, and also my family and my neighbors. I want to make sure that my, you know, if I'm giving them to all my neighbors that promise they'll wear them. So I believe that children can make these um, and the I just did a lesson last week on airplanes, drawing airplanes, and we did the Wright Brothers. And um, when I was doing research on the Wright Brothers, one of the things that their mother taught them was how to sew. And I thought that maybe that's part of my motivation for putting this in this project, that if the Wright Brothers learned how to sew as children, that's probably a good idea. For children to learn how to sew and I have to tell you um, I actually learned how to sew um, basically when I had very little money and I wanted to like wear what I wanted to wear and I couldn't really find it in the stores and so I learned how to sew and what that taught me even drawing it taught me how shirts are constructed so learning how to draw um, clothing uh, sometimes it's really hard. I'm like, I remember having such a hard time. Like, how do I draw all those, the folds in the shirts and all that stuff. But honestly, learning how to sew um, helped me huge, 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 huge. So um, you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes and you're gonna have to work with an adult and you're gonna learn how to cut very precisely, you know, and it's gonna be great. And um, some, some of the things that you'll have to do, you may, you're going to need help with an adult. Maybe they'll do this one part, but everything I've done so far, you know, we, I've cut out tons of these, um, tons of these. You can do that. Children can do that. Um, I've, you'll, you'll learn how to do this. You, you take, you take this. I'll show you how to do it later, but then you fold it, you fold one side and you iron it. And um, you're gonna, you might burn your finger the first time, okay? So don't worry about that. I mean, you'll be, you know, irons are hot. So you're gonna learn how to do it. That's what I figure. And um, so then you'll be able to do this, getting all those folded and uh, like I said, some things that you're an adult will probably have to do, and but a lot of it you can do, and a children can do. And I just had a phone call, and someone wanted a mask. <laughs> That's probably another one. So after you have all of these cut out like that, right, you've got a bunch of these. So what I would recommend doing, and this is what we want to do right here, we're going to want to create that. All right, I'm going to move it out of the way here. 
So what you do is you fold over about that far. So um, what I did was I just I went to start ironing them and so I just took an old pillowcase. So in other words um, I wanted a, a it's, let's call it a paper pillow for sewing um, for ironing at least. So I just put a, a pillowcase underneath what I'm ironing so that the iron had more surface to absorb the heat. So I would suggest that, you know, you need to put like a, a pillowcase, a cup or, you know, a, a towel maybe, and then a pillowcase. Um, but anyway, but so don't forget to make a nice soft surface underneath where you're ironing. The next thing you're going to, the next job is to take all of these things that we made, you know, we've like got a stack of probably 40 of them. All right, so obviously you're going to need an adult to help you learn how to do this, okay? So don't use a sewing machine without an adult showing you how to do this. Um, and the thing you got to watch out for is to not get your finger in close to that needle basically that's your main objective doesn't so this job once you learn how to use the sewing machine you're going to learn how to put this you always turn the needle up toward you to lift the needle up and then there's a lever in back of most sewing machines to s put it down Okay, so obviously you need an adult to help you learn how to do this. But once they teach you, you'll be able to do this job. Um, I'm going to, you have to learn to the speed. You have to get used to the speed of a sewing machine. Okay, if you push, it's like learning, you're going to be good at drawing, um, a, a driving a car. This, this actually teaches you how to draw, drive a car because you want to drive slow. And it's all based on how heavy your foot is on the gas pedal. So think of it that way. Like I'm going to learn how to drive a car by getting your foot to be very sensitive to the speed. So basically you just, there's usually some lines. Um, right here on your sewing machine that you can watch there. You see how far my hands are away from the needle? That's what you want to do. You don't want your hands to be close, anything close to there. And the, the sewing machine itself pulls the fabric toward, it, toward it. So this is a tedious job. It's going to take me quite a while to get through all these. But that's why I believe that children can do this. And Wilbur and Orville Wright could do it. So I figure if they can do it way back in the early 1900s, you can do it. So just learn how to feed the fabric into that machine there. Obviously you're gonna need an adult to help you thread the machine and you know how to get your sewing it took me a while to get my sewing machine up and running i i don't sew that often um but i like it i like to sew this is really fun it's fun to make something and it's going to be really fun to to give this woman that's coming over today a mask and know that she's going to be safer She's, she told me, she said, oh, I've been using a Kleenex. She goes, I'm okay, I'll just use a Kleenex. And I said, no, my the masks I'm going to give you have a filter. And she goes, really? So it's going to be cool for you to give these away. Or you could even sell them if you want to start a business for your town. Just a small amount. Make college fund mask company. Um, and then you pull it out and there's usually a place on the side of your machine to cut it off. And then you have to do it to 
all of those. So um, I'll see you when I'm finished with this part of the job. So the next thing you're going to do is, so I've got all of these sewn, and you have to take your scissors, and it's just better to stay on top of all these threads. Like, there's, make sure there's no, th usually there's threads here. There's a lot of threads from the sewing machine right there. So I'm going to cut them off. Okay, anytime you see some threads hanging out, because they're just going to get in the way. Um, there's all, like this is a perfect example right here, right there. So I'm going to cut that, get rid of all the, I threw everything on the floor because I know I'm just going to periodically pick it all up. Um, and, uh, and this is a job you can do. You don't need a mom, a dad, an aunt, an uncle, grandma, grandpa. This is a job a kid can do. So that's good. We like jobs that children can do. So the next thing you're going to do is you are going to take all of these fabrics that you've created and you're going to put, you have to realize you've got a piece of fabric. There's a front which is nice and pretty, and a back, which is duller, okay? So you wanna put the two fronts together, like that, like that. And like that. If you wanted to, you could do all of those and then just put one pin in it that might make, I think that might make it easier for you. Just take your fabric, put the two fronts together. I made a mistake one time and I didn't put the two fronts together. And you could make it with the dull side. But I decided to just throw it out because I just thought, ugh, complicated things. So there you go. So that's your next job. You want to line them up so that they line up really nicely and just put, you know, don't put a pin up here because we're going to be sewing up there. I would just put it kind of in the middle. Um, after we sew it, you're going to have to take them apart. So um, I just thought I would mention that I really like these pins that have like a little ball on the end. Those are really easy to use um, when you put them all together. So um, <clears throat> here's my stack of them that are all folded, ready to go to the next step. So here's the next step. So I'm going to take my template here and mark one half, one and a half inches, one and a half inches. Okay. And then go to the next one. And you always have to do it where the, it's open, right? Where these two sides put, you put together are open. One and a half inches, one and a half inches. Okay. Got it. All right. So that's the next job. So this next job is, 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 is actually pretty important. So you're going to take your big stack and now you're going to mark from the edge of your fabric. I would go, I would, um, like right there, I see two different um, pieces of fabric because they're just not perfect. So I would, you want to make this take it, go to the shortest fabric and then you're about three eighths inch and then draw a line. Okay. Then go over to this one, go to your shortest fabric, kind of line it up and then draw a line over to the other. Okay, so 
we're going to be going below this line, right? This is the line that you might have had before. Um, I'll do another one just so you can see, see it. So I'm going to go to there. Try to put it, make sure it's under the... It, it's better to have too much rather than too little. Okay, so I'm going to just put it here. And over. Okay, you get it? So here's another one. Okay, I'm just going to go from kind of where the, lo the shortest fabric is and make a line. The short fabric and make a line. Because what we're going to do is you're going to, and eventually you're going to iron this back and you and you're going to iron this back like that and if it's too short you'll have problems that's why we need a nice little area here marked off um, and so there you go there's your next job so Okay, so for the next job, I'm going to get out my iron and my ironing cloth. And I'm just going to do each, each one at a time. I'm going to take the pin out and on each one I'm going to just cut any threads that are hanging. It's good to stay on top of of all the, the the threads that are loose otherwise you got a mess at the end so I'm just gonna cut wherever I see a, a thread here all right so first I'm going to take the pin out cut the threads then I'm going to put it like this I'm going to put that whole Thing that we just did in the center like that and then I'm going to pull it apart and iron it and then see then it's nice like that okay so after you iron it and then when you turn it inside out this is why, this is what's fun about sewing. We've done all this work and then it's like, wow, how cool does that look? And I'm going to open it up and I'm gonna start in the middle and go up and then maybe stop and do the bottom. And then I'm going to turn it inside out. And I didn't mean to iron that. You don't want to iron the bottom because that's going to change. This is the only part I think an adult's going to have to do, or maybe another part at the end. But um, so what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch right along, right along here and here on either side of that. So I'm going to make sure my flaps are down. I'm going to put it down. It's a little tricky. I gotta I want to make sure I don't sew the thing underneath it so I'm gonna go like that and then I'm gonna check it out and then go a little further definitely a little tricky. 
All right, I just did it, and I'll show you what, I, what it looks like. So what I just did was you can see that I have a stitch going right along the edge there. And then I'm going to put the other side in and make sure the bottom and I'm going to top stitch the other side. It's just that it's kind of this is the only part that just seems a little bit tricky to me. I'll show you when it's done. And I'm not even like a professional seamstress or anything. <laughs> show you what it is so then it looks like and basically it's going to be the the pocket that the filter goes in so do you see that see it's, it's, that's all it needs to do it doesn't I mean maybe as I do it it'll get more beautiful and I'll get more even but it serves the purpose right now all right so I'll be back after I have finished all of these. So well, that was definitely the most time consuming part to sew all these. Um, all right, so now the next phase that we do is you've got these all sewn. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a little bit up here um, if I was going to measure it, it's about, oh, a little, just a hair over a half inch. Okay, so it's not this huge area. Um, and then you're going to take your iron and you're going to iron and make it look nice. I iron both sides. And, and I cleaned up the edges just in case there's anything sticking out. You might want to use your scissors and kind of clean them up a little bit. So I've already done that to all of mine right here. And so the next thing we're going to do is take a pipe cleaner, okay, and I measured, okay, I measured out a pipe cleaner to be about six and a half inches, and it was my red one, okay, six and a half inches. And then I cut a bunch of pipe cleaners. I took, I would take a bunch of these pipe cleaners and then put my six inch pipe cleaner, right? I would measure it, right? So I would go like that and I would throw these, I didn't throw them out, I put them in a, a bag to use for another art project someday. All right, and then what you do is you take a pipe, two pipe cleaners, I'm going to keep my red one for measuring, um, I'll get two that you could see better. Um, so you take two pipe cleaners that are both six and a half inches long and I kind of tw <clears throat> twisted the top 
like that. And then I just kind of gently twisted the bottom like that. Just kind of twist it a little bit. And then I did more of a tight twist on the end so that it's all nice and tight. In the, so both ends are pretty tight. Okay. And so now I have enough of these. I've already twisted a bunch of these together. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to um, sew around the whole thing. Okay? So we're going to sew the right along the edge here. Okay? Really kind of close to the edge. The side that has the pocket because what we're going to do eventually is we're going to put this pipe cleaner this is going to keep the face mask close to the nose and you're going to push it up there and then we're going to sew under it okay then we're going to sew under it and it'll stay there it's going to be great so I'm going to make that seam first just so you can see I'm going to do it very close to the edge. Yeah, so I'm staying really close to the edge. And when, when I get to the corner, I want to make sure that it's down, the needle's down, and I'm going to turn my fabric, and then you can go right over the seam that you already see there. We're going to cover that area up eventually and then I'm going to do it the same over here. The next corner I'm going to keep my needle down, turn my fabric and go this way. And this is a job, you know, you can do. This is a job I feel like children could do. Um, when I get close to the end I'm going to slow the speed down. Till I get right to the edge, lift it up, turn it, put it back. To, they call this the foot, and then go down again. And go all the way, and now we're back, and we're done. So we've done all of those seams. And I'm just going to slide my machine over. Um, so, again, what have I got? S you see why it's good to keep up with these uh, um, loose threads? If we didn't do that, this thing would be so full of threads. All right, so I just kind of, there's one. All right. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to take one of those pipe cleaners that you did and you're going to put it inside of the pocket. So I'm going to bend it and I'm going to stick it up and do it as close as I can to the top. Okay, so you're going to position it close to the top like that. And this is the nose piece for the mask. And then I've got my machine back. I'm going to try, I don't want to sew on top of those. So I'm going to put my foot down on that and kind of squish it to the top.
and then sew right underneath it. And I'll show you what I'm going to sew it. I did halfway, and then I'm going to check the rest, squish it, and and now that it's because the pipe cleaner has metal in it, and that'll be good because it'll stay flexible. And there you go. All right, so there you go. Now we have this substantial little wire in there, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, well, I think I'm going to do that to all my masks, and then we'll come back and uh, do the next thing. So when I get to the corner, I want to make sure that it's down, the needle's down, and I'm going to turn my fabric, and then you can go right over the seam that you already see there. We're going to cover that area up eventually. And then I'm going to do it the same over here. The next corner, I'm going to keep my needle down, turn my fabric, and go this way. And this is a job, you know, you can do. This is a job I feel like children could do. Um, when I get close to the end, I'm going to slow the speed down till I get right to the edge, lift it up, turn it, put it back. To, they call this the foot. And then go down again. And go all the way. And now we're back and we're done. So we've done all of those seams. And I'm just going to slide my machine over. Um, so, again, what have I got? S you see why it's good to keep up with these uh, um, loose threads? If we didn't do that, this thing would be so full of threads. All right, so I just kind of, there's one. All right, um, now what you're going to do is you're going to take one of those pipe cleaners that you did and you're going to put it inside of the pocket. So I'm going to bend it and I'm going to stick it up and do it as close as I can to the top. Okay, so you're going to position it close to the top like that. And this is the nose piece for the mask. And then I've got my machine back. I'm going to try, I don't want to sew on top of those. So I'm going to put my foot down on that and kind of squish it to the top and then sew right underneath it. And I'll show you what I'm going to sew it. I did halfway, and then I'm going to check the rest, squish it, and, and now that it's because the pipe cleaner has metal in it, and that'll be good because it'll stay flexible. And there you go. All right, so there you go. Now we have this substantial little wire in there, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, well, I think I'm going to do that to all my masks, and then we'll come back and uh, do the next thing. OK, 
Okay, so on the next phase, this is what you're going to make, okay? And I'll show you how to fold it. So you're going to get good at pinning. Uh, I think this is the first time we've done, um, well, this is going to be like serious pinning. And this is really good to learn because a lot of clothing has these kind of things. You, you gather something and then pin it together. So this is a really good thing to learn. So you've got these pieces that we made. All right, you have to identify where the flap, the opening is. Okay, so that's, now you can just see, this is, this is gonna be the pocket where the filter goes, okay? And this is gonna be the piece that goes around the nose and, and makes it nice and tight. Um, so you're gonna face the, this, the pocket towards you with the, um, you know, the wire here, you're going to flip it over. It's important that you flip it over because I did it once, I didn't flip it over and it did not work. Okay, so then you're gonna take your two fingers. You see how I just kind of pinch it like that? And I'm going to put it there and then pin it back here so that when the next person that sews it doesn't hit the pin. So I'm going to put it way back here and like that. So now we've got one. Now we're going to pinch it again pinch up some fabric and bring it forward and then pin that one it's going to be easier if I do it this way all right and then we're going to do one more we're going to take a piece of fabric move it forward. I'm going to do it so that there's a little bit of the other the end sticking out. One. And then one over here. Okay, so, and then Okay, so I decided to pin all of these first and that now I'm going to iron them all. That seemed to be easier. So, and then we have one more stage to go and we'll be done. That's going to be exciting. So I'm going to go like that. I'm going to put my iron on it and, and I'm going to do both sides. I'm going to get my ironing pillow, which I forgot to put down. But I'm going to iron all of these. Because when, when it's all done, it does really kind of, you know, you can pull it out. But when you put it back together, I mean, the, the creases do stay there. So it does make sense to iron them. All right. All right, well, I'll see you when this is job's done. All right, so now we are going to do the final phase here before the elastic, of course. And that is we're going to be putting these pieces. There's going to be two of these pieces that one goes on this side, the other goes on this side. This is the a job that the adult's gonna have to do. I, from, from what I've experienced doing this, I think children could do most of this, except this seam here, which is really kind of hard, um, and then this final one. But you, the children, can get it all ready, okay? So, you could go like this. So you open up 
Well, something wasn't right. It goes like this. Okay, so you've got this fold here, right? I want to go below where the stitches are. You gotta make sure that that is happening. Do you see that? And then you flip it up, and then it extends beyond this a little bit. I could bring it in a little bit. About that far, do you see that? Okay, I'm gonna flip it up, make sure it's below my stitching, and then I'm just gonna take one pin and pin it back here. I wanna keep the pin away from up here because that's where we're, right along here is where we're gonna sew it. Right along that seam there. Okay, then I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm going to turn this, this side in. Okay, and then I'm gonna pin it. All right, I'm gonna straighten this one out. Now this one, whoa, it's got way too much. So I'm going to cut it, this you could do, like that. And then I'm going to wrap this around. And then pin it. And I want to keep the pin, again, um, far away from the, it's, now I gotta go a little farther. It's gotta be kind of far away from that little edge there, because that's what we're gonna sew. All right, see that? We're gonna sew that right here, but we're gonna do it on this side. You know, this. I decided to do them all. I, so I've got these all ready to sew. Um, and so I put the, you know, there. It doesn't matter if you do, um, we're doing both ends. So some of them look like this, some of them look like that. And this is a good job for the children, for the kids. That's easy to do. All right. What I'm going to suggest you do is after you sew all of these together, then I'm going to suggest that you take all the pins out because <clears throat> then that's for the, the final um, cut that we're going to, I mean the final job we're going to do is sew them all together and then we'll do the elastic. So this is going to be getting ready for the <clears throat> final sewing. All right, so it's going to look like that. And if you want to, you can cut some of the threads that are sticking out just to kind of clean it up a little. Um, oh, there's another pin. That's good. I mean, when you do that, it's, it's pretty much all together now. And this one's going to go over here. And this one's going to go over there. And we're ready. It'll all be fine. So take all the pins out. Don't throw them on the floor. Put them in a pin cushion. And uh, all right. Well, good luck with that job. Boom, so across there. All right, I'm gonna do that and I'll show you what that looks like. Just did a little reverse stitch at the end and then I can take my pins out of this just right of what we just did. And these are all done. I've put them all together and uh, ready to do the final, um, except for the elastic, the final phase. So, okay, so I'm gonna take one and I'm thinking adult might have to do this. 
but maybe you can work up to it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold those two sides in. Make sure you can see it well, right? Fold it in. I mean, pull these two up, push it over, and then these two fingers kind of tuck that in, and then you put it over like that. And then you get a pin, and you're gonna sew it right along there. So you could pin it actually right in the middle, and then when you get to the middle, probably you'll be able to take the pin out. Okay. Um, and then I'll do the other side. And then I'm ready to sew this whole one together. Fold it, fold the ends in like that. Two hands doing the same thing together and then fold it over. Two hands that are doing the exact same thing. There's fine motor skills for you right there. Thing um, I'm noticing when I fold these that I, I almost like bring it in a little farther like that. So it actually looks like a, a trapezoid and then fold it and then it seems to to work out better because um, sometimes they were the edges were hanging over the side and that was kind of bothering me so if you fold it in a little bit then it works out so I just thought I'd let you know all right so I'm going to put this down and kind of, sometimes I have to tuck that one side in um, a little bit. And then I'm going to, take so, I'm gonna go slow. This is kind of a slow one. Sometimes you can sew fast and sometimes you can sew slow. This would be a so slow move, I think. And I'm gonna, I had to get a little bit of a tuck in there, but that's all right, it doesn't matter. Now I'm gonna to go to the other side, see how they match up. Looks like they match up pretty well. Clean it up a little bit, looks like they match up. Ready to put it in. And that's it. And then, see? All this hard work, and you're gonna love this last moment when it all comes together. You're like, wow. After all that work, there it is. And it's just like anything. The more you do anything, the better you get at it. It's like Orville and Wilbur Wright, they didn't get off the, they didn't get off the ground right away, right? <laughs> They had quite a few falls, um, but anyway, so um, this is really exciting. I'm going to finish these and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I found was that you can't cut them too um, skinny. Oh, this one's holding up. Um, I had to throw a bunch of them out because like this one, you cut it too thin and you see it loses all the fabric in between. 
So don't take that advice about cutting them too thin. So um, I ended up sewing some, t I had some scraps that were big. I sewed them together and that worked out. So that's, that'll work if you have to, if you have to, you know, but don't get, don't see like the, the rubber on the sides. Um, it works to cut the big ones in half. Like a, you can cut the, the big ones. Like I did that one. I, I cut that one in half and that worked out okay. But if they get too thin, there's a problem. All right. So I, I'm going to, when I went to the post office um, to deliver the masks that I had made to New York, I had asked them, would you guys like masks? And they said, sure. So I'm here I've started a production of, 50, they wanted 15 masks. So I've made 15 masks and I did want to tell you two things. So. When I went to get more elastic, they were out of it. And so I, I kept waiting for it to show up and I and I ordered some, but actually I found this stuff works even better. I'm kind of liking the stretchy fabric, which I said, you know, I went to, um, I was actually at Walmart and I said, do you have any stretchy fabric? And she goes, well, this is a three-way stretch this fabric. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. And so what I've done, um, this is going to save you a ton of money for one, for one thing to be able to do these. What I've been doing, what I've decided, I thought I'd have to sew that. I don't, you don't even have to sew it. I'm cutting a piece. I'm just kind of cutting a piece about this wide. You know, I would say it's about an inch and a quarter. You know, it's a little bit bigger than an inch. And what happens is after you cut it, I cut it, so I, I like the idea of making them um, longer than you need them. So that's about a foot probably. And so do you see how it just curls up? It just curls in on itself. And guess what? It's super comfortable. It's, it's even more comfortable than elastic. And so you don't have to do anything. Um, you, and so it's so easy to just put a you know, pin through it and then just thread it and tie it. Okay? So I, I'm really loving this solution. So um, I hope that helps. And then I thought I would show you how the the face mask came out that I painted with a heart. Um, I kind of like it. So it's got those nice stretchy things. And I also put in a different, or like a different, I thought I'd try like a heavier wire, but I broke two needles. Um, and then I couldn't sew for a while, so that was kind of like, that was kind of a bummer. Um, the sewing machine needles. I think I'm going to go back to the pipe cleaners, so I bought a bunch more pipe cleaners. So anyway, um, it go I, I kind of like how the heart came out. See what you think. So... So if you like this design, I say go for it, make some. Um, and maybe you'll invent your own, you know, masks. I'm, I really want to make them for my grocery store next. So now we're down to the finish line here and you're going to take your elastic and then you're going to take a pin, just a, say, a regular safety pin and close it up and then you're going to 
put it in one side. I tried to make these big enough so it would be easy. It's, it's a little tough on the other end because sometimes they get caught. Oh, that was an easy one. And then you bring it through. And then you put them together. And the person who gets this will actually have to adjust it so that it's perfectly comfortable for their the size of their head. So I would just take it around like that and I like to pull it and then tie it like that, okay? So there you go. Just gonna put on some music and I've been listening to James Taylor's new album um, during all of these. <laughs> It's really great. There's a great song in there. Like it's called "You Have to Be Carefully Taught," and uh, it's really beautiful. I love it. It's a really great song. Yeah. So there you go. Um, have fun at getting closer to the finish line. And then the only thing we have to do is cut out filters to put in each one. And I've got my fingers crossed that I have enough. If not, I'll go get more at the store. And so that's it. They go like that. This should probably be a very happy moment for you after all this hard work. And then what happens is you there's a pocket right here, right? And you kind of face it like that. You kind of push it in like that. And then you can just put it over your ears and know that you've protected somebody a little bit and um, I don't know it just seems like everyone that's had this problem in their country that's what they've done and I feel like all these people in the that the doctors off at the hospitals and everything are risking their lives to help us so the least we could do is wear a mask and try to reduce you know, the spread of this virus. And it's the, the, we're only in control of ourselves, right? And our neighbors and our parents and our family. And so this is something we can do um, with a really good filter and wash our hands and take care of, you know, ourselves and our immediate neighborhood. All right, so anyway, back to work. So, you're going to get a box of vacuum cleaner bags, and then, so they're just going to come like that, and then you're going to open them up, and take a coupon for the next, because you might need more. Um, so you're going to start with a bag. And I just realized, so you guys are learning from my mistakes. Um, there's different size bags, okay? So that's this one. So I would definitely get the bigger ones, okay? This is a smaller one, and I think it was the same price. So. Anyway, the first thing you have to do is, I would cut off the bottom right here. Okay, that's the first thing I did. Cut off that bottom, and then you're gonna cut off right here. I'm gonna have to tape that one little part, like that. So you're gonna cut right from there to there. So this, what this'll do is this'll open up, and you can cut it and then that'll then you can cut it again and get different strips okay so there's one strip now then when I get to this part I'm gonna cut I'm gonna 
open up the bag and cut around this part. I'll probably take those other bags back, those smaller ones. They, these were just the same price to get the, the larger ones. I'll have to figure out which is which. All right, so I cut that part out, right? But I can still cut, like, they're about this wide. There, so then there's another strip. Okay, there's another strip I can cut up. And then one, let's see what we have down here. See, you can't use this part right here at the bottom or the top, so you gotta cut those out. And so it looks like I could get one, two, I'm gonna try to get three out of this. So something about that big. And then something about that big, and then that big. Okay, so let me just show you what you do then. So then you have a strip. Um, there's usually a place where I've noticed it's glued together. Could be right here. No. All right, so. I'm going to cut it about that long. So when I have one, then I can just measure that one and cut it. I mean, there's no science here. I just, if it's too big, it just rolls up into a ball in there. So. And then I'll just have this little piece left over. Um, I can just measure it for you. It's about seven inches by th three and a half inches, something like that. So after you get them all cut up, then you take your filter you take your mask and you open it up. And then you take your filter and put it inside. And sometimes I've used a, you can use a, a pencil, something to just get into the corners so that they're in the corners. And with your fingers, just get it down to the bottom if you can, and in there. And then what I've been doing is just kind of going like this, flatten it out. And whoever you give a mask to, you could tell them so that they can go get, and they can replace their filter whenever they want to. All right, so, I've actually got all of these done. So these are already have filters in them. And I just have a couple more to go, I have three to go. And I really just used about one bat, one box of the large ones. And um, actually one box did 35, um, masks, but you might need, I would probably get two boxes. Just, you know, that that's what I would guess, get two boxes. All right, okay, I'm back to work. Okay, so the last thing you can do, this is just if you want to, um, what we did is we're going to be sending these to a hospital in New York. And so I just wanted to attach a little note. Um, so I just wrote up a little bit about 
actually drawing children into reading and and things like that and then I'm just going to pin it um, onto the mask and then send it out so you could do that with your masks you could just you know make it um, make your own little note and, and tell you a little bit about your own story and um, that way they it's kind of nice to know like who made your mask um, the mask that you're going to be donating so you might call it branding <laughs> I don't know um, or you could even maybe you could even start a, a business you could everyone needs a mask so you might want to start selling them in you know, just, and that could be your little branding uh, piece of it. Anyway, it's been fun uh, explaining all this to you, and I wish you all the best and good health, and enjoy this time um, that you're with your family and indoors, and um, I thought it might be nice for you to reach out to other people a little bit uh, with some masks. All right, bye.